Oh my god, what are Rick and Ryan up to now? It's time for the Slightly Warped Podcast. Welcome one and all to another episode of the Slightly Warped Podcast. I'm Rick, and right there on the other side of me, Ryan, a.k.a. Big Show. What's up, man? What up, what up? What's going on with you? Ah, uh, you know, same old, same old. Just trying to make it in the world. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Another day, another nickel. Oh, you got a raise. I did. So, um, just I stole uh, my wife 10 cents a day, so I didn't really make a race. <laughs> you're still in the hole, huh? Oh, yeah. I know how that is, too. You know, it seems like, uh, we have, like you said, pretty good weekends, but the beginning of the week, eh, so so. It's really rainy today, so it's just kind of one of those days that just makes you just want to be blah. Is it's it really? Been a blah, yeah. Yeah, it's nice and sunny out here. I wasn't even expecting it. Uh, I'm not complaining about it, though. Um, shoot, I'll take that all day long. All day. All right, let's get down to business here. I want to talk about some entertainers real quick. First off, uh, Billy Joel. Uh, he was in the news, and you know, unlike most entertainers, he was actually in the news for a good thing. It says here in this article from the Showbiz Cheat Sheet, Billy Joel loses 20 grand every concert because he refuses to sell this kind of ticket. So I'm sitting up here looking. I wanted to see, you know, what kind of ticket is he refusing to sell? Apparently, he doesn't uh, sell the first two rows of any of his concerts. Uh, really? He doesn't like people that, are uppity that can afford those seats and just sit there and don't do anything. What he likes to do is have his people go out to the rafters, to the back seats, find the true fans that scraped up what they could to get those seats. And he brings them down to the front rows. I like that. That that's, that's pretty dope. Yeah, it is dope. I mean, you know, that's the kind of thing you like to hear about entertainers. You know, they, he, he gets it, you know, and you yeah. just hope that there are some other people that, you know, get it too. Cause I've seen some of these ticket prices too, on some shows nowadays. And it ain't like when we were growing up. No, nah, I haven't been to a concert in years, but I do remember uh, going to a couple of Garth Brooks concerts uh, when he was, uh, you know, just, really on his heyday here in Kansas mm -hmm. City. And uh I seen a documentary, something that he does is no matter what stadium or arena he's at, he goes and sits in the farthest seat from the stage to see that person's view and then figures out how he can connect with that seat. And he'll do it throughout the stadium. Hey, that's nice. I and like so that. like I remember I remember in Kansas City when he was here, you know, his stage was in the middle and the crowd was basically all the way around him and he would climb up the side of the stage stills and point to the people in the top row and things like that and it's pretty neat yeah yeah you just like to hear about entertainers that you know do that they they go the little bit extra that makes you appreciate it yes sir now still in the entertainment news but not for any good reasons uh, Shazam 2 continues a uh, DC downward spiral and I don't know have you seen the movie yet? Nah I'll wait till it's on a streaming platform. Well you may not have to wait long because I just heard this morning that they are thinking about putting it on streaming as early as next month. So I'm That's like, the way to recoup wow. some money. Yeah um I guess uh, it had a, and I'm going to use it in quotes, disappointing 
$30 million opening. Um, while most films would kill for a $30 million opening, I guess if you spend a couple hundred mil on your film, you do want something a little bit better. Now, I said that it's a downward spiral for DC, but Marvel has been hit on some hard times with their last couple movies as well. So do you think it's superhero fatigue? Um, yes and no. Uh, I think part of DC's problem is they don't have a clear vision on where they're going. Uh, sure they do. But next week, that vision will change. Exactly. A month later, they it'll change again. They don't have a clear vision. Like, I was very, uh, as a as a fan, just a pure fan, I thoroughly enjoyed uh, Black Adam. I thought mm -hmm. it was well put together. It teamed off the first uh, Shazam movie pretty nicely, you know, so you kind of knew type of stuff. And then... You know, then you heard that uh, what's his nuts was going to be Superman and Henry Kane, and then shortly after that he wasn't, and then shortly after that The Rock gave the big finger to the DC universe, and then boom, Shazam come out. Shazam two. Now, real talk, I haven't seen Shazam yet. I the was first actually one? not Shazam. Excuse me, uh, Black Adam. Oh man, you got to watch it. Well, what put me off about it was. Uh, right before it came out on home video, the whole DC thing came down and they said, no, nah, we're, we're done with Henry Cavill. There won't be another uh, Black Adam movie. So once they started dismantling all their characters, I'm like, why? Why am I? Well, why Henry, am I Henry Cavill, really, it wouldn't matter if he was in the DC universe or not for Black Adam. It was just the fact that they had the the credits the 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 final credit scene is a little standoff between black adam and superman uh kind of like at the end of shazam there was supposed to be that superman cameo and all you saw was him from the neck down yeah uh kind of like the same thing uh but i mean in the comics shazam actually fights black adam so they had an opportunity to make that happen but once the rock basically gave his finger to him i mean We'll never, but the movie just in itself, just take it away from anything and just watch it as its own. This is it type of thing. It's, it's not a bad flick. It's pretty good. All right. I'm going to have to check that out then eventually. I just really disappointed because DC has a lot of potential. Um, I'm looking forward to the, the flash movie coming out with, you know, and Michael Keaton reprising his role as Batman now, you know I'm, what? I'm looking forward to that. I agree with you on that. Before I saw the preview, it wasn't even on my radar. I'm like, why would I want to watch this? But once I saw that commercial, I believe it was it was either during or the week before uh, Super Bowl week. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, this looks like it's going to be pretty good. So yeah. I am intrigued. It is not one of the top two movies that I'm looking forward to this year. And for the first time in about four or five years, the top two movies I'm looking forward to are neither one of them is a superhero movie. Uh, one would be John Wick chapter four and the other is mission impossible. Uh, um, dead, dead reckoning part one. Um, Tom Hanks or is Tom Cruise reprising his role in that one? Yes, he is. So, um, not to say that I have any superhero fatigue. Um, I still haven't even seen um, Ant-Man Quantum Mania either, but Me that's either. for different reasons. I mean, I, I don't know if I'm getting really, really old, but sometimes I just wait for streaming and a home video. That's what I that's... did for uh, uh, Wakanda Forever. Yeah, and that's the... That's the times that we live in. I'm not going to go sit in a closed room anymore and worry about getting sick. And yeah, yeah. no, I'll just stream it on my own device and I can wait. If I want need to go to the restroom, I can pause it, you know, or, I'm, yeah. you know, that's, that's the joy of it. I mean, if there was some blockbuster movie coming out that, you know, I just had to go see, which there hasn't been one in a while. No, uh, I would go do it. But 
you know, or if, you know, the grandbabies wanted grandpa to take him to a movie, I'd probably do that. But otherwise, I'm not. Yeah. I, I mean, either way, you make an event out of it. If it's an event film and we haven't, like you said, we haven't had one in white sometime. No, nah, but I think, like I said, if DC would actually stick to a concept like Marvel does, like their whole first phase one through four one through five was all about the avengers building let introducing all of those characters and they're gonna fight thanos that was it and now that's they're gonna reintroduce new avengers new superheroes and they're gonna fight kang the conqueror who in the comic books is makes thanos look like a nun um but you know they have a they have a pure and they are and they have an end date they said after this, after they complete this complete phase, they're done making Marvel movies it, you <clears> know, like that. So, I mean, that's what they say now. Obviously, money talks bullshit. Oh, yeah. Marathon. So, uh, but I think if DC would actually have a actual plan and stick to it, they have a lot of potential. The Justice League ain't no chumps. Yeah, and, and I, I did see both versions of Justice League. The Snyder Cut, man, that opened literal doors for all kind of things to happen. And Especially I, with, Mar with the uh, Martian Manhunter. At the, mm -hmm. you know, those little things, it's like, yes, this is what we need to see. Yeah, yeah. for whatever reason, DC can't get out of their own way. Um, I think even though there's been to some degree, some little, some fatigue with the Marvel movies, they do have a plan. And if you look at it as a whole, even if you don't like one or two of the movies, the other three or four in that phase, you will like, especially if you look at it as, as a whole. You talking and about for Marvel or DC? For Marvel. Yeah. But see, I mean, like, don't get me wrong. Probably... There's been a couple DC movies that I did like. I did like the first Shazam movie, and I like yeah, the Aquaman movie. I like the first Wonder Woman movie. Didn't like the second one. I think. I think also the other problem that I'm reading about is this new Shazam movie. Is okay in the first one. It was kind of a comedic type, you know. Great, you know. This is a young kid with all this. Super, it was funny. Yeah. They can't. They 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 seem to can't get off of that train right now. You know what I mean? So they're still they're trying to recoup or redo the same comedic stuff, and it's just not hitting like it did because it's like, eh, you know, you don't rewatch a a, a stand up comedy special unless it's like you know uh, Richard Pryor or Eddie Murphy or something like that. You know, once you see one, you know, or you know, the Kings of Comedy, you see that two or three times with all those legends. But yeah. you know, a, sta a standard, you know. Cat Williams or whatever, you're gonna watch it laugh, but you're not gonna laugh the same when you watch it the second time, you know. And I, I think that's kind of, I think that's also kind of part of the problem, and the fact that yeah. this is on the the coattails of all that other crap that blew up, you know, in the last six months with DC. If I was DC, I wouldn't have announced that they're done until after the Flash movie. Then say now we're gonna regroup because I think that's gonna cut into it for a lot of people. I think what they could do, I mean, my ideal, uh, like there is, and a lot of people don't realize this, and I forget his name in the comic book, but the, in, a, in an alternate universe, Superman is a black man. And I think they should recast him with uh, Michael B. Jordan and have him play that part. And I think he could reprise Superman. Just from a different, you know, just it from would a it would uh, be different. That's for sure. Timeline, a different timeline, you know, kind of like they do with Marvel. I mean, they're about to open up super duper timelines in this Flash movie because, if I'm mistaken, Ben Affleck's in it too as Batman. Yeah, Ben Affleck Michael is Keaton. Michael Keaton. Yeah, so um, you're gonna have two Batmans from two separate timelines. Yeah, on the preview I saw, General Zod was fighting Supergirl. I'm like, wait, yeah. didn't Henry Cavill snap his neck? So you know, it, it's exactly. got to be a different timeline. Exactly. So you're, they they're opening up the window where they could do that, you know. Um, yeah. And if they do yeah. do that, I do want some sort of percentage because it was my idea, DC. If you're listening, yeah, y'all hear that? Give Big Show his due. Hey, one thing before I get off of the superhero train here, I noticed when I saw the preview commercial slash whatever you want to call it for Shazam Two, Helen Mirren 
was the main enemy in that movie. She plays some kind of witch or something. And I'm thinking to myself, you're pairing him against an old lady. Yeah, from what I understand. What kind of action like, are we going to get out of that? Uh, from what I understand, they're, they're gods. And okay. And there's three or four of them. That's why the whole Shazam crew is fighting them in this one. You know. All okay, so people. she's the leader there. Yeah, she's the head god that they're attacking, trying to get the powers back. Or, I don't know. that, But it's not, yeah. Again, I agree with you. you know, old and, lady, and, ooh. And, and I, I... Watch out, know, she's going to hit you with her purse. Before the Me Too movement lines up on me, I'm not going against women. Because I, one of my favorite Marvel movies was uh, Thor Ragnarok, in which Hela is a woman, and she played it to a T. So just remember that uh, I'm, I'm, I'm more down on the Shazam movie itself, not the premise, but I'll All still right. watch it. I'll make my own opinion in a few months or maybe hell in a few weeks by what you said when it comes back out on streaming. Pretty much. All right. You ready for a laugh? I'm always ready to laugh. I don't have any news per se for today, but I ran across this Gillette commercial that oh, I would crap, like I to play for you. And I want to say real quickly, I don't have a joke this week. I suck. I'll, I'll come back at everybody next week. <laughs> okay. But I'm going to play this commercial, and I want to see. <clears throat> I, I hope you laugh as much as I did. We'll talk about it after the commercial. Here we go. Let's roll it. You can find tutorials for the masses for doing brows and curling lashes, but influencers won't mention me. Is the word pubic blasphemy? Yeah, you could ask your mama. Who wants that kind of trauma? Hope can be found for your pubic mouth. It's time to care for your pubic hair. However you care. Hey, Venus. For your pubic hair. I'm not ashamed of my pubic hair. I celebrate every hair down there. If it's shaved, it's waxed, or full of hair, it's my body and it's self care. Since history, there's been a stigma. See, if you say pubic, then you're dirty. Say pubic. But it's your choice and it's your voice. So away with that and let's make some noise. However, you can say pubic, pubic hair. See, there's step one, then there's step two. Venus has the tools so you can do you. <laughs> Yes, um, I ran across that. Well, actually, what was Heather and I doing? We were um, watching something. I forget what it was. And that commercial came on. I could not believe it. Nothing surprises me in this day and age. But now I'm going to have a stupid pubic hair song stuck in my head for the rest of the night. I appreciate it. You're I'm welcome. I'm be humming down the hall. My pubic hair. I don't care. You're absolutely welcome. <laughs> Paybacks are a mother. I know they are, and I can't wait. All right, for the rest of you guys out there, holler at me. If you've seen that commercial, tell me what you think. If there's a crazy commercial that uh, you want us to check out, drop us an email at the slightly warped podcast at yahoo.com all right back to it here um i sent you um and i want to make sure i get it right so i'm, I'm gonna read it uh, it says here in this article ladies this is why i'm a firm believer in men getting a paternity test no matter what if the woman is your wife or just a girlfriend andrew wiggins the NBA player. Uh, he's a 100 plus million dollar NBA all-star and a champion. He hasn't played in over a month and no one could figure out why. Come to find out his girlfriend just got exposed for sleeping with his best friend and Andrew was taking care of the child without even knowing the child was not his. Oh boy. So imagine having a kid that you're raising and then you find out Ain't yours. Bro. How old was the kid? Ah, uh, just looking at the picture. Um, and 
looks like maybe one or two at the most. Nah, it couldn't be two. Probably a year old or less. So I don't I don't know how long I don't know how long that picture was taken. And uh I don't know any more about the situation, but that's gotta be devastating. It's gotta suck, it's gotta hurt. I mean, it's 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 more than your girl cheating on you. Your girl cheated on you for a long time, thought that uh y'all were good, had a child, found out after starting to raise a child that's not yours. So, you know, it just sort of snowballed. I mean, <clears throat> from this singularly focused uh, article, yes, that's messed up, but I'm sure there's more to this story there, than there just could be. this particular point of view. Um, I mean, we don't know if it's an on again, off again relationship. We don't know if she was been with the other guy for ever. We don't know if it was a one time thing and that was the product of it. I mean, regardless of any of those situations, it should not have happened. Uh, no, what, what, oh, you mean her sleeping with his best friend? Yeah, yeah. I agree. Probably yeah. shouldn't do that. Um, I'm not much of a friend if that happens. No, and, uh, and that that's that's the other thing that in the snowball that makes it worse. It wasn't just another guy; it was one of your boys. Yeah, probably, like I said, probably not 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 one of your good friends if that was the case. But I'm trying to put myself in a position. I mean, let's say let's say that the kid was a year old. Okay, let's just say okay. You've been loving on it like it's yours for a year. Yeah. I mean, it's yours. You know what I mean? Yeah. I did, and, I mean, and, and keep in mind, too, be through hurt. no fault of the child. Yeah. I mean, would I still be with the girl? Probably not. Um, but I don't know. I, I would like to know more about that story before I actually make a full comment, you know. Uh, but from just what I read, yeah, she's trash. Just by by what was given to us to read. Yeah, I mean, I agree. with I mean, because it doesn't I, even say what he did. You know what he did after he found out. That's true. I mean, this may be an ongoing thing too. I'll, I'll have to check in on that. Me myself, I probably wouldn't be with her either. Definitely wouldn't be friends with the other guy anymore, and he'd have some explaining to do. Um, and I don't necessarily agree with this guy's opinion that <clears throat> it doesn't matter who the girl is, <clears throat> excuse me, you should get a paternity test. I mean, you know, if my wife got pregnant today, I don't think I'd go out and get a paternity test. You know what I mean? I mean, because it says it doesn't matter if she's your wife or your girlfriend or, or what. I mean, now, if you're just sleeping around and you weren't serious, then Yes. Yeah. Before you before you start paying child support, make sure that baby's yours. But if you're in a committed relationship, for whatever reason, she made the mistake, she got pregnant, she thought it was you, it's not, ends up being your best friend. Yeah, that sucks. You know, I can see why he may not have gotten one. Because it says his girlfriend, it doesn't say his wife, right? Right, it's his girlfriend. Yeah, so... Like I said, I'd like to know a little bit more backstory. Okay. We'll have to do some research. Definitely. Definitely do some research. Um, It, it would be crushing. I do know that. No matter what. It would be crushing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Especially and, you if know. you thought that it was yours and it's not. So, show? Not only, not only the hurt from her stepping out and the hurt from her stepping out with your boy... But to learn that this kid that you were loving, that you thought was your seed, it isn't. Yeah, that would be devastating. Yeah, I mean, it's a triple shot. The kid's not really yours. Your woman wasn't faithful. And she wasn't faithful with your own boy, you know, your friend. And like you said, and that your, wasn't really your friend, so, you know. Yeah, your boy wasn't faithful either. Nope. And there's nothing like somebody, you know, sitting around joking, laughing with you. And the whole time it's like, mm, can't wait to be alone with 
his woman, you know. Yeah. You know something along those lines was in his head. Oh yeah. Shocking. I'm gonna definitely go not, get some more and uh not I'm gonna really. try to I'm gonna try to get some more uh on this uh this week so that uh we can run this back next week. Yeah, let's do that. In the meantime and in between time, tell me about a moment in your life when you really had to bite your tongue and exercise patience, but in the end, everything worked out. By worked out, what do you mean? Nobody went to jail? Nobody died? Uh, Anything good came out of it. It doesn't have to be a hellaciously bad story. It could be something funny. It could be something, just uh, a learning experience, anything. For example, you know, one of mine is um, my kid notoriously believes that he's the best at everything. Don't ask me where he gets that from because it isn't me. Um, It's not a bad belief. No, but uh, he went out for track uh, last year and started off the season hot dogging it in practice, getting smoked in meats. and I, I wanted to, you know, do the old Vince Lombardi and really push him because I knew I could get a lot out of him. But instead, I held back and uh, used a lot of positive affirmation, of course. And towards the end of the year, the light went on. The work was put out and he got it. And, you know. What what we got out of it, we salvaged a good a good year, and um, for the most part, he did enjoy it, and um, basically turned that situation into a positive. I, I I think he just assumed, hey, I like to run, so I'm going to beat everybody, and he had to realize on his own. Now it takes work because the person that you line up against, they working all year too. They also like to run. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So, you know, instead of me pushing, I just, you know, step back and just be understanding dad instead of a uh, crazy ass sports dad who tries to push their kids into anything and everything. And anything short of excellence is not good enough. I didn't want to be that. So, and, right. and I'm glad I didn't go that route because I think he got more out of it like that. I mean, if he was lining the gut up against my fat ass every week you wouldn't have to work out or train very hard but you know those kids that actually run he's got to actually work at it yeah and he learned that good um good um what mine i mean it's i i owe a lot to my martial arts training the the you know the the more i went into it and the longer i've been in it the the more calm and patient I am compared to when I was, when I was younger, but this was probably about six or seven years ago. Um, yeah, I I work in a trucking, I worked in a trucking office at the time and, you know, as a dispatcher, you know, you don't always, uh, see eye to eye with drivers. You know, Mm -hmm. you guys have some disagreements. Well, this particular driver, um, he, he, even to this day, doesn't really like me much, um, which is fine. Doesn't work for me anymore. But uh, he uh, he had called one day, and he, you know, he's just a super loud guy. You know, after a while, you, I'm just getting, you know, people just yelling and not really listening. You just really are fed up with it. So mm-hmm. I was on the phone with him, and I told him, you know what? I'm, I don't feel like arguing with you right now. You know, he goes, well, I'll be there in three hours. We can talk face to face. Okay, whatever. I'm, I don't leave till five. So, you know, it is what it is. Well, and I just hired a bunch of new people. You know, I was running that office and was teaching. And he came in and for, I would probably say, 45 minutes to an hour, uh, called me every name in the book, yelling at the top of his lungs, threatening wow. me, um, you know, trying to get me to bite and you know as close as this mic is to my face he was that close to my face Mm. and i just you know i just responded yeah 
you're right. Yeah, he goes, you know, he would say some things like, you know, well, we can just meet outside. And I looked at him and smiled. I said, what are we in high school? What? I mean, you want me to meet you at the bike rack? <laughs> you know, what are we going to do? You know, and, uh, but, you know, after a while, he realized he wasn't going to get a response out of me or one that he wanted. He finally, you know, turned around and left and thought that he won. But I had four people walk up to me and ask me. They said, what kind of martial arts do you do? And I want you to teach me because I would not have been able to stay that calm. So, you know, and I'd never really had another falling out with this guy. We just really just didn't talk, you know, we just, yeah. I didn't really pay him no attention. He didn't pay me no attention. We just kept it moving and, you know, the world is big enough for the both of us type of thing. Uh, but I will say this, and I've told this story to a few people and I've actually been more explicit than I am here. Cause I know we have younger kids that watch, but I broke that dude's neck five times in my head. Just saying. <laughs> Real talk. Like those people, if I was there, I would have came up and said the same thing to you because I don't know how you kept it together. And I don't know how I did either, to be honest. I don't know how I did either. I just did. I would have immediately started calling you sensei because I'd be like, you know, <laughs> teach me. Teach me because I need to know. Because, yeah, sometimes I got a short fuse and if somebody up in my face, it's go well, time. Um, also, I mean, I'm not trying to toot my own horn or anything but i'm a multi-level black belt in two systems you know i know what i'm capable of so i don't need to do anything does that make sense like that that's that's why i would have said hey teach me not just the moves it's something about that you can pick up on that from the people that are calm the people that know what they're capable of they know to hold back because they know what they can do. And that's more along the lines of what I would want is that confidence in knowing I can do it, but knowing that I'm above that and I don't need to do it. I mean, that's trust me, I, I want it. I wanted to. <laughs> oh, I, I, I have no doubt. I have no doubt. I but that restraint, to reach out and touch somebody. That level of restraint, that is what most of us would love no matter what. And it wouldn't have got me anywhere. You know, it just made the whole matter worse. I mean, he wouldn't have been able to ever drive again because things would have been broken. I'd have been in jail, you know. And see, that's me. I, I'm not an eighth degree black belt. I'm eighth degree crazy. So yeah, at that well, point. I'm neither an eighth degree black belt either. But It, it wouldn't uh, have mattered to me if I would have won or lost. We both going to know that we were in a fight. That was my logic. And I would rather see, have your logic. That's where with my training unless i'm fighting somebody who's as skilled as i am the fight's not going to be that long because i'm not i don't i don't play tit for tat you know if yeah. you swing at me it's your turn then it then it becomes my turn my turn my turn my turn my turn until i get done you don't get to tell me when i'm done i'm done when i'm done you know but i don't want to get started because you know that's that's difficult but yeah. yeah, um, and I was very proud of myself. I'm still proud of myself to this day, uh, that I didn't that I didn't respond like I really truly wanted to. But in my mind, I broke his neck five times. And here's your champ, ladies and gentlemen. Big show. <laughs> hey, that's that's awesome. All right, there we got one other one. One uh -huh. other one I'll quickly share was okay. I was with a bunch of friends and one one uh one of my buddies or one of the guys there was uh tweaking and mm. uh he was he was kind of being very abusive to his wife slash girlfriend at the time and she came out screaming and and things and uh you know said that he had his gun sitting on his on his um bed you know while he was mm -hmm. yelling and then one of his family members went in and was talking to him and she came out screaming and said the same thing. And so I was like, just, I'll go in there and see if I can talk to him. And I walked in there and talked to him and he was going off and off and off and blah, 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 blah. And I just looked at him and said, Hey, can I get a drink of water? And his, his whole demeanor immediately changed. And he gave me a drink of water and said, man, I'm not going to kill myself here. Take this gun and take it out of my house. So people just leave me alone. I'll get it back from me in a couple of weeks. And that's what I did. What a way to break it up. Just asking for a drink of water. That's he awesome. Changed his mind. 
got his mind off somewhere else. And it just like immediately changed his demeanor. He immediately calmed down, gave me a drink of water. We talked for a little bit. He asked me to do that and I took care of it. I like that. Hey, salami, salami, bologna, bologna. Gold star for you. <laughs> All right. We're getting ready to get on out of here, folks. But one more time, I just want to reiterate, uh, if you have any questions, comments or anything for us, please make sure that you uh, send them to our uh, email address, the slightly warped podcast at yahoo.com. If you're watching on YouTube, you can always comment on there, like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. Anything else before we get out of here, Big Show? No, not this week. Again, I know you guys, it's only been two weeks and you wanted this joke, but I completely spaced it out this week and didn't get one. So I will come back next week with a vengeance. Give him a pass, though, folks. I'll bring you guys pubic hair today. <laughs> See, that was funny enough for everybody. There and we go. Damn song is stuck in my head. Love each other. Tell the ones you love uh, every day that you love them. Hug them, squeeze them. Tomorrow's not promise. There you go. Y'all stay positive, stay blessed. Good night, everybody.